kids out of the pool for adult swim. If you're watching this video, it's probably because you, much like me, spent one too many nights staying up late to watch Adult Swim. Since 2001, this late night programming block within Cartoon Network has been a pioneer of adult comedy, responsible for classic original series as well as bolstering the popularity of old favorites, with its early reruns of Family Guy and Futurama doing well enough to bring both shows back from cancellation. They're also a network on the cutting edge of culture and fan interaction, starting with weekly on-air content that interacted with fan messages from their forum, and evolving into everything from over-the-top live events, to experimental programming like fake infomercials, Fish Center Live, and a show called Off the Air, which compiles surrealist YouTube videos based on a unifying theme. They also lay at the forefront of content preservation, with a website that meticulously preserves everything that ever aired on the network in an on-site video library that spans decades, giving fans access to full series, specials, and even certain pilots. But it isn't a foolproof system. Despite rigorous archiving and an army of diehard fans that work to preserve every piece of network content down to the last commercial bumper, there is a fair bit of Adult Swim content that's gone missing over the years, with some eventually being found and others likely gone forever. On this Lost Media Monday, I want to take a look at what's been lost in the deep end of Adult Swim. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment with other Lost Media topics you'd like to see me cover, and get the kids out of the pool. It's time for Adult Swim. Mary Shelley's Frankenhole, Mother Tabisa. Dino Stamatopoulos' Mary Shelley's Frankenhole is a series unlike anything else. Part parody of classic monster horror and part offensive time travel comedy, the series' first season focused on various historical figures traveling through time and space to ask Victor Frankenstein to fix their problems. Its plots were nothing short of completely insane, featuring episodes like Lyndon B. Johnson wanting his brain to be put into an assassinated Kennedy's body, Ron Howard body snatching a younger version of himself from the past to reclaim his youth, and Thomas Jefferson, uh... Mr. Jefferson needs to graft your penis onto his body so he can better satisfy the black women on his plantation. Your slaves, you mean? Semantics. Clearly, it had no problem walking the line, but the show would face trouble when one episode so blatantly crossed it that Adult Swim pulled it from the schedule, refusing to let it air through reruns, streaming, or even their website. The episode, titled Mother Tabisa, was the second show produced for the series and involved Mother Teresa seeking out Victor Frankenstein to terminate a pregnancy which only happened because she can't bring herself to say no to anything. Frankenstein exploits this, ignoring her problems in favor of getting her to do menial labor around his home. Please, I please. Please. It ends with her falling for the perverted invisible man, finding him attractive because his invisibility keeps her from feeling guilty for being with him. The removal of the episode would cause continuity issues down the line, as Mother Teresa would make brief appearances cleaning Frankenstein's home and giving birth to babies throughout the rest of the series, meaning audiences would never end up knowing how she got there. At least, not for a while. What is it? It's alive. Back to work, Mother Teresa. All right. In 2015, Mother Tabisa was finally unearthed, discovered in one of the most secretive, mythical, and hard-to-find locations fans could have ever imagined. Locked behind protections, encryptions, and red herrings that- Wait, hold on. Okay, turns out it had actually been publicly viewable on creator Dino Stamatopoulos' Facebook page since mid-2010, and it just took someone half a decade to actually notice. Not only is the episode completely finished, but most interestingly, its first and midpoint scenes, which feature a naked invisible man watching Elizabeth Frankenstein take a bath and then terrifying a little girl, were reused for the second season's final episode, with Mother Teresa's plot being replaced by one that focuses on Victor's implied jealousy toward the men flirting with his wife. This is a rare example of the thing we're looking for being hidden right under our noses, and while Stamatopoulos has since deleted his Facebook page, the episode can easily be found through a quick Google search, giving us a rare open and shut case that the lost media world doesn't see too often. 12 Ounce Mouse the original pilot. 12 Ounce Mouse is amazing. It's actually one of my favorite shows of all time. No joke. 
The strange blend between David Lynch horror, Aqua Teen Hunger Force humor, and the crayon drawings of a kindergartner is a dizzying odyssey whose plot and characters were ultimately forged by split-second decision-making and mid-season production troubles with the network. Looking back, it's hard to imagine Osmo without the collection of eclectic characters that form the show's chemistry. However, at its inception, Mouse and his crew were intended to have a much different dynamic. In a 2021 interview with the fan site Corndog Central, show editor John Breston mentioned a pilot that predated the series' final pilot and first aired episode, titled Hired. Not much is known about its plot or style, but this early pilot would have featured the character of Golden Joe as Mouse's boss, voiced by Adult Swim senior vice president Keith Crawford, who you might know from his appearances in Robot Chicken alongside Mike Lazo. Canceled. When the final pilot was produced, Mouse's boss would be recast as Shark, voiced by co-creator of Archer and Sea Lab 2021, Adam Reed. Who told you about the party? Because I don't have people in that often. And you're not even people. While Golden Joe would be reworked as a music star in Debt to the Eye, and would be voiced by the much more energetic Vishal Roni. Man, I'm a good driver. I drove my mom crazy all last year. I'm a good driver. Unfortunately, Breston stated that this original take on the show has been lost to time, and with only himself and series creator Matt Malero being aware of its existence, there probably aren't even other copies that have a chance of surfacing, making this one piece of lost media that's probably lost forever. Palisades Toys Adult Swim Line, Series 2 after debuting in 2001, Adult Swim quickly became a cult favorite among animation fans, earning a network-wide toy line from Palisades Toys in 2005. These released as two packs, with each one focused on one of the network's original shows. This included Harvey Birdman, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, Sea Lab 2021, and The Brack Show. Outside of a few recolors and some convention exclusives, the line wouldn't see any releases past its first series. This wasn't because it was cancelled, but because Palisades Toys would shut down due to bankruptcy in 2006, forcing them to cease distribution and development on all current projects, including a second series of Adult Swim toys. These planned figures would have included Harvey Birdman villains Mentok and Reducto, Sea Lab crew members Sparks and Murphy, and most importantly, the remaining members and most iconic extras of the Aqua Teen Hunger Force, including Frylock, Meatwad, Carl, the Muna Knights, and MCP Pants, with only Master Shake and the Moth Monster Man having been released in Series 1. Because of the line's abrupt end, the only way to get a complete squad of Aqua Teens is through a 2005 Comic-Con exclusive box set, which these days only runs you the small cost of the PS5. While there's no hope for a wide release or easy finds of this second series, prototypes have leaked in the past, showing these figures do exist in some form, and a two-pack of Mentok and Reducto has been sitting on eBay for years with the completely reasonable price tag of <laughs> Soul Quest Overdrive If you've never seen or heard of Soul Quest Overdrive, just imagine this. A spin-off of Aqua Teen Hunger Force, a very funny show, based on the group from Season 5's Bible Fruit, a very funny episode, starring John Benjamin, David Cross, and Kristen Schaal, some very funny people. On paper, it sounds great, and you're probably wondering why you've never heard of it before now. Well, the people who have heard of it can tell you why. It's because it was bad. It was really bad. The art style was ugly, the characters didn't work, and it mostly relied on cheap shock humor, either being as mean or as over-the-top ridiculous as possible in lieu of making any actual jokes. Also, the characters were changed from fruit to sports equipment for some reason. I don't know. There was so little hope in Soul Quest Overdrive's success that it never even received a proper time slot on Adult Swim, with the network instead airing every episode of the series just once, on May 24th, 2011, during its 4am to 5am graveyard slot. Except, as it turns out, it wasn't every episode. When Soul Quest Overdrive was announced, an interview with animation studio Radical Axis stated that the series had received a six-episode order, but only four would be shown during the May 24th burn-off. 
Since then, Adult Swim hasn't just kept the final two episodes off of TV, DVDs, and even their own website, they've also provided no information about their existence, with no titles, plot summaries, or screenshots available to the public. Not that anyone's really asked for them. It's worth noting that the only source we have for these episodes is the Radical Axis interview, and a six-episode order was never announced through an official press release or a statement by Adult Swim. It's always possible those in the interview misspoke, and the last two episodes were never even ordered. Since even in a world where Adult Swim was happy to broadcast the show once, then let it die in the dark, not even putting those last episodes on their website would be out of character for the network. In the end, that uncertainty is just part of the mystery. But with 11 years having passed since the show's only airing, and nobody really clamoring to see, know, or even think any more about it, it's a mystery that may not be solved anytime soon. Space Ghost Coast to Coast's Lost eBay Ending As the first series ever produced by Cartoon Network, your favorite show probably owes its existence to Space Ghost Coast to Coast. This late 90s talk show parody opened the channel up to original programming in 1994, and served as the centerpiece of the network for most of the next decade. Beyond that, its Dada humor, use of pregnant pauses, and manic spiraling plots defined a style of humor that would serve as the cornerstone of the soon-to-be-born Adult Swim. In a show that already feels like a hallucination more often than not, Season 6's Snatch stands out as one of the high points of that lunacy. In the episode, a group of alien replicator pods wait for the show's crew to fall asleep so they can devour and clone them. It's feeding on the rays! It's the rays! It's, it's feeding on them! With an unrelated alien blob covering the ghost planet to keep them from escaping. The blob! It ends after the crew mistakenly drinks decaf coffee and finally passes out, showing the pods creeping toward them before cutting to black. At least, that's how it ends today. But if you were watching the episode when it premiered in 1999, you would have seen... Well, I'll just show you. Oh, hello there! I didn't see you, I was busy reading my colonial book. I suppose you're wondering what happened to Space Ghost and his fabled gang. Well, I don't know. <laughs> but you can find out by checking eBay.com, as they have a one-of-a-kind ending that you can purchase starting at $7. Now leave me, for I must finish my colonial book. So who won this vampiric forefathers 1999 eBay auction for the ending of a Space Ghost episode? Well, we I don't, don't know. know. While screenshots exist showing bidders leading up to the end of the auction, its winner and the true ending of Snatch are still unknown over 20 years later. Nobody within fan communities ever claimed to have it, and the writers haven't said anything about it as of 2022. Decades later, it's not unbelievable to think the ending could still surface, even from Adult Swim themselves, who have a history of sporadically providing new content for their old shows when we least expect it. But barring outside intervention from forces beyond their control, this isn't exactly a search with any clear path forward. 